everybody how are you all i am frugal lisa luther's sister as you can see first off i want to say thank you to all of you all you reached out to me to check on me i really do appreciate it thank you all for subscribing thank you all for just want to know what's going on with me in regards to lupus and my um recent procedure or surgery that i had um i'm gonna go ahead and get started with you all for those of you who are new welcome 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 i am um have been experiencing a feel for well I won't say AFib. I have been having PACs or irregular heartbeats since 2010. And that was before I was ever um, diagnosed um, as having lupus. And um, so they've been treating treat me for PACs, they call it. Premature arterial contractions or something, whatever it is. So I've been treat. I have been treated treaty been treated for that for since past almost 10 years up until recently which was like december the 31st 2018 i had an episode where my heart rate went like through the roof along with irregular ir irregular heartbeats as well and that's when i finally got the di the diagnosis uh, of um afib so Fast forward to today, um, August the 24th, no Luna. I'm sorry. If you all, Luna's here. She's jumping around, so my camera may shake. I'm sorry. But um, August the 24th of this year, I had another episode. My first episode, which was like I said, that I finally got the diagnosis of a field when I was outside <clears throat> running uh, with Luna. Then my, my heart, uh, heart rate doesn't want straight to over 200 and something but this past time um august the 24th i was in my car and i was singing and my heart automatically went to like 220 something short of sorry i don't know what happened i got no luna here she go again want to jump i'm sorry <clears throat> it was cut off for some reason but um i was singing and um my heart automatically went into um trying to hold his washi the went into a field and 911 um took me to the emergency room and then my cardiologist was like okay something needs to be done because now they began to happen too frequently so they she scheduled me to see a um electrophysiologist cardiologist and what they do they manage the the rhythm the rhythms of your heart and so I went to see him and he went ahead and recommended that we um, proceed with having the AFib, um, not AFib, the ablation done, the cardiac ablation. And I, but first, I would have to be on blood thinners for 30 days prior to the procedure. So they started me on a blood thinner, and I had to make sure I take it every day because uh, with AFib and arrhythmia, I am so since I had the surgery, I've been like all scatterbrains with ablation. They do not want the increased increase the risk of having a stroke. So I've been taking my um, blood thinners. I'm still taking my blood thinners. I, I will continue to take that for at least um, I know three months. But he also started me on this medication called Flecainide. It is for heart rhythm to take it every day. My cardiologist had told me to take it um, three tablets. If I go into a field, it automatically put me back into rhythm. But he want me to start taking it every day, which I'm continuing to take it. To take it, so I um, was scheduled for my um, ablation on October the 30th. And while I was there seeing my um, EP doctor, he suggested or he recommended that there's a new catheter out there that they are. It's a study on it, and asked if I would like to participate in that particular study. Uh, he gave me a little bit of information about it and I, you know, um, said that I will participate. It still be like a regular ablation, but what it does, they will use this new catheter and, um, on me and they will, they will follow my care um, 
a whole entire year. I would carry a monitor with me at all times now just to manage my uh, <clears throat> my heart rhythm. They would do extra testing on me alongside with my regular pre-op from my EP doctor, which is good. So I'll get extra care, I mean extra post-op care, which, you know, was, which is good. So, um... The procedure I checked in, um, I had to be there at 6 o'clock in the morning. The procedure um, takes four hours, so I was under for four hours. There's there's different types of um, diagnosis that they do ablation. There's SVTs, ablation, supraventricular tachycardia ablation, and then there's AFib um, ablation. I think with the SVT ablation, you are mildly sedated where they were I think you were kind of aware a little bit but I was put to sleep totally because my procedure took a little bit longer and it's a little bit more intense than the SVT ablation so like I said I was under for four hours they kept my family updated every hour when I went into the operating room there was so much going on there were like a lot of people there there were the research team. The doctor had his team. Um, there were so many equipment. I was like bandaged all over. Like it was just a lot. It was kind of overwhelming. But I had two IVs, one in each arm. Um, you know, they talked to me. And then next thing that I know, I was looking over while they were on. Um, they were actually watching um, YouTube. Next thing I know, I was waking up. Um, and I had... Really, the worst part of the procedure for me is I had to lay on my back for four hours after the procedure. Four hours. Couldn't move, couldn't move my leg, couldn't do anything. Because they went into my growing, so I had two incisions, uh, one in each growing. And, um, oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. <sighs> Luna. So I had uh, I have two I had two incisions so therefore I had to lie still for four hours four hour bed rest that was the worst you hear me the worst so I got through that I stayed overnight um, everything was pretty you know pretty my husband stayed with me my entire family was there like my mom my dad my kids my husband my brother my aunt a lot of people cousins were there so I had a lot of support my husband stayed the night with me uh, you know they continued to monitor me monitored me overnight and I went home I, I came home I am over Luna y'all no do y'all see her I am um, trying to hold my camera. Well, go ahead, Luna. Go, go do what you're gonna do. Look, she, she threw me her ball. Look, good girl. Come here. Let's show the people you. Show people you. Come on. Let's show the people. Look. So you got a new toy. Look, look, look. Look, look. No, 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 no. No. She love chase balls. She love toys. But um, I stayed overnight. I came on the next day. They took out my stitches. Um, they recommended that I um, take it easy for at least seven days. Um, no heavy lifting over 10 pounds, so I can't even pick up Luna. Even though she's 10 pounds, I don't even um, attempt to pick her up. And um, <clears throat> he said that um, what he found when he did my ablation, there were four veins, which is the pulmonary vein that goes to my heart. This, that's where my um, a, a field was coming from, is coming from. He said that he took care of that. AFib is not curable, but it's treatable. But I am speaking that it is cured. 
Um, some people have um, more than one uh, ablation or they may have to do medication, whatever. But I am believing that my AFib is cured. I um, will continue to take the medications, I know, for at least three to six months. I know the blood thinner, I know for three months. But the, the heart rhythm medication, I think he said um, six months. So I follow him every three months for a year. But the along with the um, research team, so I would... I am pretty much um, pretty much taken care of and I am just trying to you know stay healthy do what I got to do I am also checking to, I have a sleep study done because sometimes sleep apnea which I have been diagnosed with sleep apnea and then I was told that I didn't have sleep apnea anymore but I beg to differ so I will be having a um, um, a sleep study I think on the 12th of this month but I will follow up with my EP doctor and all of that but I just want to let you all know that I'm doing well I'm trying to get my energy back and I've been in the house since Thursday when I got home and here I am um, it has been a struggle y'all I'll tell you that it has been a big struggle but I am maintaining what I have to and just trying to take it easy I still have some fluid I still have pericardia per, pericardia effusion which is fluid around my lung I still have that they um, did an echocardiogram before I left so I still have that so of course he told my parents that that is contribute to my lupus with the fluid around my heart but it is what it is and he said that I still may have um, breakthrough um, palpitations which I experienced that, that that same day after the procedure while I was in the hospital but it should get better he says you take like a three should I should have like a full recovery in three months because they pretty much went in there and put scars on my heart tissue where the um, electric electricity was coming in to get my heart all but it is what it is, y'all, and I'm just going to take care of myself and do what I got to do. And I want you all to take care of yourselves as well, and I hope to be back with some videos, at least on a positive note, on living on a, or either a much of a woo-hoo video. And I just thank you all so, so much, and you all just take care of yourselves, okay? Much love. Bye.